Hi guys, I'm John Armstrong for Atelier Goncharov. We're at the International Double Reed Society Conference in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, we've just packed up the display and I've just grabbed Lorenzo Masala. Now, Lorenzo, you worked for Reeds and stuff for over 20 years. Yes, it was and, a long and nice adventure. Right, and now you're freelancing and you're with Howarth. I see you're on the Howarth stand. Yes. Sir. Okay, good. And, and uh, now I have different uh, directions, different jobs. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, I've spoken to some people who tell me that you know more about reeds than everybody else put together. <laughs> As I know it's a big, big call, uh -huh. but you actually helped me the other day with uh, my own instruments. You had some insights that I found particularly invaluable. Uh -huh. So you've got this sort of analytical brain. Um, you're a good oboist, but sometimes you need a person who really thinks about things mm -hmm. to analyze, what is the best reed for me? Yep. What am I doing wrong with my reed making? What mistakes am I making with my embouchure? Or now, I've heard that you've, you've matched people up with the correct type of reed for their rhombushore mm -hmm. and you've really helped a lot of people over the years. I mean, 20 years with reeds and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I've been researching, researching on my own. Okay. Uh, because I was always interested in this. Yeah. Uh, French school, German school, I come from Italy, so I learned different schools. I always needed to develop different reeds and it helped me to, to be flexible and to understand more the people when I was working for it and stuff. Are there still distinct schools like an Italian school, German, French schools? Everything is more or less mixed. No. It is. It's it a pity because uh, we have less scholars. Yes. Many orchestras have lost, have lost their unique character. Yeah, their distinctive sound. Yes. So I remember buying Decca recordings of the Concertgebouw in the yeah. 1980s and I really loved those recordings. Yeah. And there still was a Dutch school of oboe playing. Yeah. I'm not saying the current guys, which are a lot of Russians in the Concerto, but are good. But there were distinctive skills of playing. And, and the Berlin Philharmonic with Lothar Koch had yeah. that thick sound. Now you have a lot of French oboes in German orchestra. Yes. Wow. Uh, if you visit the Paris Conservatoire, you hear a lot of German style playing. Yep. So you've been watching all this happen over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, you feel a little sad about it, but the standard of playing now is so much higher, than I think, yes. than what it used to be. Yes. People think more about music than about American, French or yes. German sound. So people are less obsessed about reeds and they're spending more time actually thinking about the music. But they mm -hmm. can do that because they've got experts like you who can mm -hmm. help them sort out these problems. Well, some people like KG or uh, Jordanov came with a lot of very good reeds in the last year, so the level has raised. Yes. Yeah, there was more concurrence in the machine area. The yeah, machines when I start today are much better. Yeah, when I started the oboe, you had to make your own reeds oh, and just make yeah. your own way. And I realized... Hundreds I was, of reeds. Yeah, and I was making an inappropriate style for a long time. Mm -hmm. It probably set my playing back many years. Mm -hmm. But if people can get in touch with somebody like yourself, <laughs> you could save a lot of time. I try to help. You do. I know you do. So, uh, um, will you have a... Is some way people can contact you? Do you have a website? Not yet. I hope you, to have it soon. I think you should because I think a lot of people would like to reach out to you, especially in this day and age where we've had COVID and teleconferencing and Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. There might be an opportunity there yeah. for you to help people. Everybody can contact me on Facebook or Instagram. So It's easy to reach me. So we'll put a link below this video mm -hmm. so people can get in touch with you. Mm -hmm. um, if not, they can contact Natalia Goncharov. Sure. And um, look, uh, you've been to Russia? Yes. Many times. I love Russia. Good. Wonderful. Well, look. Yeah. When today it's, it's difficult to. It's difficult now. to say this, but it's it's a nice country with nice people. Not yes. everybody's bad. No. In fact, <laughs> uh, I've married one, so I'm I'm, oh. I'm certainly in love with Russia. Mm -hmm. So uh, no, look, um, and I know they're very welcoming, and there's a great musical tradition in Russia, yes. and. Uh, I remember hearing the USSR State Symphony Orchestra visiting Australia in 1985 and the oboe playing wasn't on the same level as the violin playing, for example. Mm -hmm. But uh, the oboe players they're producing in Russia now are incredible, yeah. um, which is wonderful. So look, um, if Russian oboists want to get in touch with you, we've got the link there. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you coming to the uh, International Double Reed Society Conference next year in Arizona? I hope so. Okay. Now I am in, in Howard's team. Yes. And with Howard. I hope I will come with Howard. So guys, if you can get to the next conference, 
I suggest you do it because you'll meet this wonderful man <laughs> and you'll probably pick up some very useful information. <laughs> so, Lorenzo, yeah, thanks for nice. talking to us. Thanks. Thanks, it's a John. pleasure. Thank you.